so law enforcement's always hurting no matter what, yeah. right? In numbers. So where the where do you think the first pool of people that we pick from is the pool of people that we said no to five years ago? It's happened right? to us too. So we're well, we're pulling from yeah. the jail. I'm not saying that the jail is any is any worse or better than law enforcement, but sometimes um, it's been known that jails will pick up people that law enforcement de- ne- didn't necessarily take. Um, that's what I've seen. Is that is that a rumor? I've heard the same things. I don't know how to hire them, but I've heard the same things. People don't get hired, so they come to corrections. We get some really good people in. But the problem is we get some really good people that stay for a long time, like guys like me who want to do the job and love being a correction officer. we got other guys using it for a stepping stone to go on the road. And the thing is, you guys don't take the guys that don't make it. You can take the good offices. Hey, let, let me know if I start talking too fast. I do talk fast sometimes, and I am from New York, and I had some caffeine, and I get all excited. <laughs> all right, so your Instagram name is George, yes. but you, your first name is George? George? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're sitting here with George. He is a, we, me and Sam talked about getting a corrections guy on here. George reached out. Um, he works in the area with us. So um, the first thing I want to ask, and then we'll get into what you do, how much is actually in a county jail? Very little. It's, very little. It's, it's well, consider is different. If there, is there sex consensual, not consensual between inmates? It's going to be considered. Rape. So we do the pre, which is, comes a headache for pre, which is a prison elimination um, act. So every inmate is a special phone where they can call. It's called a red phone and say, "Oh, I was." Raped. But if it's consensual, not consensual, it's very rarely that it's non-consensual. It yeah. does happen once in a while, but you wouldn't believe what inmates. For being a correctional officer, 21 years, I've seen, I worked federal prisons, I worked DOC prisons, and I worked jail. Guys that never had sex in their life, even women too, gay sex in their life, will have it in jail and then leave and never have it again. Yeah. Yeah, institutionalized. Now, that's more of a prison thing, right? It's in the jail too, no. Yeah? It's in the jail oh, too. so consensual sex. In the jail too. Uh, yeah. uh, what do you, is, I mean, I'm not trying to call it gay sex, but essentially. Gay for the stay? Yeah. Pretty much as they say. All right. And stuff. So George, what do you so do give us your background and then what you do today? All right, um, I started corrections about twenty one year um, twenty three years ago. I got a job with the Department of Corrections in Florida. I was living in New York, I applied for jobs down here. Came down, worked for them for about three years, and then I went out to Los Angeles Federal Corrections. I was I was prospect at LAPD, so I went out to LA for a while to work a federal correction job. Didn't really like it out there, realized Is that it was, part of the sheriff's office? Um, it's, it's separate. It, oh, okay. It, like, okay, like with our job too, Orange County Jail is not, like, you know, I know the j- sheriff's yeah, office. Yeah, we're one of like three counties in the yeah, state of Florida that's we, Department of Corrections. I right? like it that way. And it's, uh, we can get into that after if you want to talk about why I like it better than not being under the sheriff's office. Yeah. But with my background, so I went out to federal for a while. I was processing LAPD. I'm glad I did this way because I didn't like it out in Los Angeles. I went out there to kickbox back in the day, do stunt work, to visit, but I never lived out there. I got out there, I'm like, wow, it's just like, just like New York, with nicer weather, just as expensive. I want to go back to the South. So I came back to Florida, worked Coleman for a while, got fired. What's Coleman? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Coleman's the federal prison out there in Sutton County. Okay. It's federal correct, uh, federal correctional facility, which they had a big stab in there. Um, that gymnast coach who raped the uh, I just he got saw stabbed, that today. He got stabbed out. That's where he got stabbed in Coleman. Oh. So he'll be, he'll be, should be coming to Orange, whoever stabbed him should be coming to Orange County Jail. We hold the federal for the court down here. Mm. But yeah, so I worked there for a while, I got fired. Didn't want to, I wanted to get back in corrections, but I took a little break and I really missed it. I love being a correction officer. So actually I went to Orange County and they say, you're not certified. You have to go back to the academy. I was like, F no, I'm not going to go back to do another F in academy. Yeah. So I actually called DOC and I left them great terms. I said, hey, we got you. Got me back rehired in 40 days. When I started the first day at DOC again, Orange County called me, hey, we made a mistake. You are certified. But I just got a DOC. I don't want to leave. And as soon as I got DOC, I started doing the that, That's stuff. federal? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm using terms that you guys so you guys are saying the Department of Corrections the right? Department of Corrections Florida the state prison system so I had that state prison system over there in uh, CFRC off of the B line and then Orange County called me I stayed there for uh, DOC longer because I was doing the, the storms which is the gang stuff I, so I was doing some gang work over there and working the pods and then I went to Orange County Corrections after a while I wanted to see where everyone was going at one time Everyone went to Orange County Corrections. They were, had the, we had the money. We had the best jail in the world. We had everything going on there. And things have changed. We're going to discuss today about the hiring now. So I went over to Orange County, worked the floor for a year, 
Then they started an intelligence unit in 2008, a gang unit, intelligence unit. I got on it. I've been riding that out ever since for the last 15 years. Do you work, do you work intelligence that goes on in the, in the jail, but pertains to the outside? Oh, absolutely, man. We work a lot with you guys, uh, OPD, other agencies. A lot of the intelligence comes through the jail. And like when we first started the intel unit, uh, the other, like some, some of the oldest sheriff's office guys, uh, OPD guys and gang units, they didn't want to deal with us. Like, oh, they're the corrections. We had a bad reputation from a guy that used to run it years before that. And he's gone now. He's been gone for years. So we started working together, and the, the times changed, and the, the, the turnover for you guys, gang units, is really high all the time. So then we had new guys coming in that were actually correctional officers at one time or realized what value corrections had in Intel, and we started working, <clears throat> working a lot of stuff with you guys. And um, like in the jail, all the inmates talked to me. When I started doing Intel in 2008, no one had tattoos. One inmate called me tattoo one day. My name for the last 15 years has been Officer Tattoo. I walk through jails and say, hey, tattoo, I need to talk to you. Someone I've dealt with you before. You think the tattoos make you more relatable? Absolutely. Uh, I used to work with this guy. Um, I don't know if I say names or not on this, on this thing, but I used to work with this guy, a good friend of mine still, went to Eternal Affairs later on. Now he actually got picked up by Eternal Affairs Fire Department, which, which is really good money. He went over there, but he, when we worked together, he was a Marine, and he looked like the Marine still. Mm-hmm. He was the one that like, wouldn't even talk to inmates. It was it was just a different the way he treated him. Well, I came around. I'm the guy with the tattoos. I'm the guy who's pretty down to earth and pretty pretty cool guy. And so they always started talking to me. They to the level where it got such a level of be talking to these guys that they would uh, they'd come to jail and check in with me, or they'd be talking to your street guys and like like um, some of the guys your old gang and they'd be like, hey, f you guys, I don't want to talk to you. I'll talk to tattoo in the jail. I'm like, oh, screw, whatever. We talk to that guy, not realizing we talk on off the record mm, all yeah. the time. I would always do stuff off the record, so I was never brought to court. If I were brought to court, these guys aren't going to tell me anything anymore. Yep, that's and they're true. the ones that tell me where the drugs are, where the shanks are, who's fighting who. I'd had these guys talk to your guys in the street off the record and tell them information that, hey, don't put on the record, but I'll tell you this stuff. And it, it's always helped out. It's worked out real great. We started working really great together with OPD, with you guys, with uh, other agencies. We built it really for a long time, from 2009 to like 2015. We were all rock and roll with gang stuff, from the streets guys to jail guys to DOC guys. Is we it still like that now? No, it's changed a lot because the gangs have changed a lot. The times have changed a lot. I, pr- I, I don't really don't even know who's on your guys' gang anymore. I don't. Really, I, I heard Danny Orlando, but I think he's at. Oh, the sorry, thing about I'm like say a, names, am I? I we'll okay, but yeah. I think the thing about bleeps. Okay, so oh yeah. By the way, everybody for our audio audience, Sam is here. He just hasn't said anything yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a listener. I didn't give a chance to say anything. I'm talking. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a lot of th- people think that gangs, at least in the agencies that I've worked, gangs is either one guy and they mix them with an intel or gangs is a couple of detectives that collect intelligence on gangs like when i grew up sam maybe you too when i grew up i thought before i was a cop i thought gangs were going to be guys in tack vests and beards you know yeah. out there crushing it but gangs is really more intelligence than anything right am it's, i wrong talking to the guys like i'll tell someone i work the gang unit they think i'm kicking down cell doors and ripping things apart at the end of the day i'm really just talking to these guys and they talk yeah. to me you you don't talk in that way. Um, they're not gonna give you any information. They tell do you, you everything. Do they? Do you collect like tattoos and stuff? Yeah, like we that? do. Um, now we're a big agency, so we don't get everyone's tattoos coming through the jail. Where like um, Lake County, they tattoo everyone, but they barely everyone coming in. You know, That's we true. have too we have too much of a flow. You, oh you yeah, man. Like a Friday or Saturday night, especially if there's something going we're on. We're sitting at the jail chilling for like two hours trying to get in that bitch. Yeah, it'd be so crass. So, but if we have when I did it. Uh, Cause I don't do it as much now. Cause I do more canine now, but I'm still part of the unit. But when I do it, I'd go if I talk to them about anything. I don't care. If I'm talking about drugs. I don't care if there's an inmate fight or a tattoo. And I'm taking a picture of all their tattoos, put it in a file. They might not be a gang member, or an unfounded gang member per Florida statute, but I have their tattoos now. Do you? Uh, what is? Can, do you bite in there in the jail? No, my dog's a jerk though. Mm-hmm. He wants to bite all the time. He thinks uh, he thinks uh, he thinks a German Shepherd is a Labrador. But you, we oh, so bite. we don't have bites. What's no, your dog for? He, drugs? He's actually drugs and cell phones. Cell phones, thumb drives, SIM cards, oh. and drugs, and narcotics. Our guys don't they don't they're not allowed to have that stuff in there? No, we are uh, getting cell phones is big money, man. If you get someone to bring a cell phone in for you, a volunteer or a civilian, so, hey, uh, you, you can get three thousand for one cell phone. And they is that a, is that a thing? I don't want I don't want to speak on. You could speak on. Uh, jails and prisons as a culture that's what we yeah. do so like we're not necessarily talking about the jail that we work at well, well yeah but I like know, you've been in different different facilities yeah, i know doc they would tell me their phones are getting over there they're getting like three thousand dollars for someone to bring a phone into the uh, department of corrections are they able to hide it pretty good yeah they move it fast you can't keep up and now what do they use the, is there wi-fi 
TikTok. No, no, they just um, yeah, TikTok. I see it a lot. Um, yeah. No, there's regular. Um, yeah, oh, they have data plans. Yeah, they have data plans. Um, I wish I, I, sh- I wish I'd have brought some to show you. We had these phones. They're called Boss phones. Beat the Boss phones, and it, they're so small they're like a thumb drive, and they're they look like they could only text a few letters at a time on it. But they do codes and everything else. They actually talk people. And it's designed, if you look it up online to buy it, it's designed, it'll say, perfect to go up your bum. It is designed to go up in someone's anal cavity to hide it. <laughs> it's a whole different culture of people moving stuff inside prisons and jails. They, they, Ass culture. Yeah, basically, it, it's a, uh, a suitcase culture. They, they train their, their anuses, I guess I want to say, to be able to put things up and down there. And they can put stuff. We had a guy with a cell phone years ago. It was a flip phone. It was a long time ago. We knew we had the phone because we found the charger. We could never get the phone for him. So finally, we uh, something happened. I remember what happened. And we said, so like, bring you for an x-ray right now. Bring you for an x-ray. You see the phone in him. It's so far up there, it's unreal. But we finally said, hey, this captain's not there anymore. They, they, uh, you take that phone out or it's going to be taken out medically. We have medical staff with us when we do this. We're not doing it ourselves. We're not allowed to do that stuff. Medical staff checks for that. Let me just say that right now. <laughs> yeah. He squatted down and pulled this thing out like it was no big deal. It was not a big deal. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, can you move the mic a little closer to your face? Oh. Thanks. It was no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, no, they train shut themselves the for fuck that. Up, Sam. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm yeah. interested. They, I know um, nothing about they jails. Actually, they'll train themselves for that. Just like mules on the who mule the drugs. Which I got some good stories for that too. We deal with with Intel. Uh, by the way, oh no, my God. Oh, someone else here? Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought you were gonna puke on me. You went. <laughs> so I thought I missed something. No, I was going to say something. What? I was going to say that our gang unit is fully staffed and we have 100 men and 100 everything. Yeah. Don't and, fuck around. And yeah. <laughs> and we okay. know everything. <laughs> we know everything. So oh, I, you, you must be with OPD then. <laughs> ah, a little yes. bit of cocky. Yes. Just kidding, OPD people. Um, OPD friends. I'm just so kidding. The, the culture, I realized that what law enforcement's been feeling the last 10 years, um, the PC... The CYA culture, mm-hmm. the, uh, the everything's on camera, no, nothing. It, it, I'm now realizing that the jails and corrections are having to deal with that too now. It's just been a while because, and I say that because when I started, it used to be a threat to say, don't let me tell the jail about you. And it used to be that they would act up and kick our windows out. And as soon as we pulled up in the sally port, it's yes sir, no sir, yes sir, no sir. It's still like that a lot today, but I'm... I'm realizing that the aggression, and I say aggression, I'm not saying people will get, you know, out of line, but the aggression from the jail staff has been, have you noticed, has been reared back a little bit? You know, they're not like as, uh, they're not fucking people up like they used to. Yeah, <laughs> they're not stern. I plead the fifth. Now, um, <laughs> on that note, uh, I think it's the cameras have changed a lot with stuff going on. There's old school guys. I used to hear stories about before I got there. I mean, if you were traumatized before I got there, you were a child molest, you were getting beat up. Now it doesn't really happen, even with the inmates too. But the cameras in the jail, people don't agree with me all the time. The cameras in jail has helped us out also because of inmate fights we had to track down. But the accusations, sometimes they would say, and the mm-hmm. cameras like, well, the camera show, they had me in the elevator, they beat me up, and you, sh- you pull the camera in the elevator and you just stand in the elevator. So the cameras actually on certain, cause, only because I know the eternal fair guys, because so I work in intelligence, and they would tell me today, hey, those cameras actually have helped. And it's also, you know, hinder some people that got, Took it a little too far after use of force, and it, it just it just it's the nature of the game, and so I think a lot I think a lot of the jail culture has changed too from um, the inmates and the staff. I went into the jail a while back to take a report for some BS uh, sexual battery claim, which, uh, and I got briefed by, I want to say, some kind of supervisor, I think it was a sergeant. And she's like, it's so bad now because your boards and people that sit on the Department of Corrections boards but are never in the jail, they're making up all these weird things now where you can't. You know, any type of claim gets investigated to the fullest. Mm. Like, he touched my butt when I was sleeping. 
Yeah, that came from the, the Prison Rape Elimination Act from the feds. That's why that got really bad. So anything they say, it, you can it, put an inmate in handcuffs, walk him somewhere, and he turns around, calls his red phone, and says, oh, the officer touched my wiener when we were walking. And it's, it's just it's a shame that's got to be investigated because it, it's, it's just a federal law. And it's, that's what's changed everything. Oh, he touched, even with inmates, oh, the inmate touched my butt because he owed him money for uh, maybe gambling. Like that. So he wants to, hey, inmate tried to rape me. Get me out of here. I need to be safe. And that's where it comes. The prison elimination like, really changed a lot inside the jail. That's got to take so much manpower away and hours. And you know, It does. It does. Because, it stinks. Because it's I remember. The, I, well, I was, well, if you get like uh, accused of something, do you get put on leave? Or it do depends get- what the accusation is, how the accusation came across. There's a lot of factors to it. Just, you just say, say you're an inmate and say, hey, uh, Officer George here, um, he he touched he touched my butt. Mm-hmm. And there's not any accusation to it. Like, wait, what? Okay, you you go here and put his inmate in, we'll put the inmate in PC. So he's away from everyone. He be really so we can watch him, not really get away from the offices. But if there was an incident and they got your camera, come that guy's cell. I mean, it's so many different factors too. If they're gonna put you on no inmate contact or not, they used that first. Oh, inmate accused you or something, baby. No inmate, and they realize, hey, we can't put everyone on no inmate contact. Inmate started playing the system. Mm. They don't like an officer. Yes. This. And that's the report that's I went. Happened. I went and took that. And the sergeant was like, she was just like, dude, he's trying to get out of fucking away from them. And so all he has to do is say, oh, they touched me. And now they got to move them. But look at you guys. You guys have to come off the street to come into the jail. And you come to the jail. It isn't easy for you guys. You got to take your weapons off, take all your stuff off. That's t- 10, 20 minutes right there. Wait for someone which... I don't. At one time, you guys would walk through the jail. I don't think they let you anymore. I think you have to be escorted now through the jail. You got to find someone. Mm-hmm. We're so short staffed. We can't find someone. You guys get, hey, why is no one getting me? We're short staffed. Then you got to come take a report. That's nonsense. So it takes a body off the street for you guys. It take, might take a body out of the jail. We are so short staffed. Like, it's unlimited overtime now. I work so much overtime on the floor away from K9. It's unreal. Like, you could write your own checks right now. Yeah. And so we have no one. We have no one's well, going I to the academies law, anymore. Uh, law enforcement. Why is that? I think the stipulation of law enforcement, uh, correct. And I told you guys in the fire department too, the same thing. I didn't know that. They don't have anyone. I don't think anyone wants to do government work. I think that, I think this, yeah. uh, I'll be a political and I'd say, I think they made dollars on YouTube. Yeah. They, they can do, they want to, <laughs> I know people left the jail who were correctional officers for years, left to go because they want to do Uber full time because they get cash money that day. You know, they're not about the retirement. I'm about retirement, man. I want my retirement. I don't want to think about what I'm going to do when I'm done. I want to do what I want to do for fun. I know what I want to do when I retire. I don't want nothing in law enforcement. I want to teach kickboxing and have fun. It's my fun job. I want to teach kickboxing and hang out and do whatever. I don't want to do anything in law enforcement. I don't worry. I want a monthly check. That's why I get government work. I'm a moron, dude. Don't give me a uh, don't give me a payout check like a lot of people do. Not an investment check. I don't want that. I'll spend that. You yeah. know, it happens a lot. We get a lot of guys come back because that they spend that entire investment check fast. Yeah, but the man. um, I noticed too law enforcement. So law enforcement's always hurting no matter what, yeah. right? In numbers. So where the where do you think the first pool of people that we pick from? It's the pool of people that we said no to five years ago. It's happened right? to us too. So we're well, we're pulling from yeah. the jail. I'm not saying that the jail is any is any worse or better than law enforcement, but sometimes um, it's been known that jails will pick up people that law enforcement ne- ne- didn't necessarily take. Um, that's what I've seen. Is that is that a rumor? I've heard the same things. I don't hire the hiring, but I've heard the same things. People don't get hired, so they come to corrections. We get some really good people in, but the problem is we get some really good people that stay for a long time, like guys like me who want to do the job, love being a correctional officer. We get other guys using for a stepping stone to go on the road, and the thing is, you guys don't take the guys that don't make it. You can take the good officers. You take the guys that are really good at oh, a great yeah. back. You're not going to get, hey, <laughs> take this knucklehead. We don't like him. Like, we get, I'd have an agency, a UCF police call. You guys go, hey, George, you know this guy? I'm like, yeah. It's like, we're thinking about taking him. like, I want to tell him, hey, man, take him. He's an idiot, but I couldn't tell him that because I want to get rid of him. But yeah, yeah. So I was like, hey, uh, hey, I'm gonna get your heads on the off the record because people come to me because I know people from so long doing intel. But you're not taking our, you're not taking, you're, you're taking our cream of the crop. You're taking our best guys. You just yeah. got a few good guys from us uh, last few years, man. But hey, more power to them. What's your favorite jail, Sam? I, I don't want to say any jails, but <laughs> it's not true. the one. Not the one that I. Dan's been at like fucking ten different agencies, though. Really? So yeah, so I, it's not the one that I'm currently at. I just, it's, well, uh, uh, okay, so we're talking right now, I think you're, you're, I believe that jails run by sheriff's offices uh, make it better, selfishly better for us, worse for the people inside. Yes, I don't, I don't um, think we, we, we go, 
Sheriff's office. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That Any jail sense. that's run. So in the state of Florida, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's three counties, give or take, that have Department of Corrections running their stuff. May, might be more than three. I well, heard three. Well, that Department of Corrections is state. Did yeah. I ever say Department of Corrections is actually state oh, running oh, county yeah, I'm sorry, jails? Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, so but you're talking county, about having their own chief under the public safety director, not under a sheriff. Okay, so a county to corrections. And so I, I would say that, like... From our view, it's better that the sheriff runs the jail. That's our view. And because it's, again, more selfish. Because when I came to one place and I worked the area of the jail, now I'm getting dispatched to the jail to take reports for inmates wanting to complain on COs or crimes that were occurring in the jail. So it was super annoying. And one place that I worked for, we never touched that. And then the one they had sworn in there to do it. Right? They had sworn they handled everything within there. So it was like we weren't a part of that. And then also the one place that I worked for when we went in, as soon as we went in, the inmates or the the arrestee was already turned over. And then they shared the same system we did. So like the tattoos and stuff, all this stuff we could see through their system too. We in the place I'm at <laughs> don't communicate like you're saying you're intel and i've been in this place for i don't know like six years and this is the first time like we've met and i've been there hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and i'm sure i could have found so much information in your system to help me with cases on the street be like hey this guy's here and look at your systems just to see something yeah i I think what you're saying with that with the intel part and the gang part that always been an ongoing problem we like I'd have my buddies, like guys we talked about before. Like those are my buddies. They're always gonna call me. They're always gonna reach out to me. Then I have other people get information they don't want to share at all. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I don't share it. I've been on the unit for years. I could help you out. We had so much gang activity going on. For if you were in our unit and your guys' gang unit from 2007, or eight, nine to like 2015, you were rocking every day with gang stuff. We had to share information. But it was the guys we came buddies with that one that called us, or we called them. Hey, I got something for you. Thing went away. I think you, didn't you? The gang unit go to like. Me and Sam try not to discuss our agency's... uh, We'll edit that out. Yeah, we try not to talk about our agency's business. Not that there's anything wrong with what you just talked about, but we try to not (laughs) poke the bear. (laughs) Tell me you drink Tier 1 Blend without telling me you drink Tier 1 Blend. I mean, but yes, I, I just think that law enforcement is suffering in numbers. It's being covered up, and therefore, the jail's probably always been suffering. Because, what's up? No, at one time. Oh, I thought you said something. At one time, no, no, no. At one time, we had so many officers. Everyone's come to us. What's Wait. one time? When was that? At, uh, and why were they coming? 13, 14, uh, from 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up until, it only stopped really with our jail. Maybe three years ago. So we need another economy crash. Yeah. Everyone was coming to us. Everyone wanted to be a government worker. But if you worked another jail or if you worked Department of Corrections, Florida, they would get we would get paid more money. We had unlimited overtimes. So people would come to us like crazy. But now with the Department of Corrections raise they got, Florida Department of Corrections they, they got, people are leaving us to go back there now because they're making more money. Is that there was a lot, unheard of, is of, there one a lot time. of private jails in Florida? I only know of two of them down south. I don't know if there's What's more a than that. Jail? Um, they're just they're run by. Um, Civ- it's like all civilians. Yeah, it's all civilians around there. They're a mess. You get basically pay your way to get into a private jail, though. You pay as an in, as an inmate. You have to pay a certain money, so you actually pay your way to Who private are jail. Are the guards sworn? They're uh, not sworn. No, they're basically like G four security guy type type people. It's not. I don't know if it's G four. Yeah, it's not trained. So they're security guards. They're not correctional. Basically, officers. security guards. Yeah, not correctional officers, and that's sworn that under Florida <laughs> statute. Yeah, it's. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. Because the inmates basically pay the ways to get there and just run like it's like crazy. It's kind of like those people that do the uh, those inmate transports, the private companies did. That's a horrible job. I don't know how these guys do that. Everyone I talk to, that's a horrible job. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in the National Guard, the only reason I knew about private jails was a couple. There was a couple of guys that were in those private jails, and they talked about and they were at that time when I was in, they were at eleven dollars an hour, and they were taking They're care of guys low. who were. Murderers, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, for eleven dollars. I'm going to escape. All right, <laughs> yeah. See you later. Yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of like the um, that when uh, who was a governor Scott years ago. He was like make everything private. 
tried mm-hmm. everything private. And he did, and he actually violated a lot of federal laws. They stopped it, but he started closing state prisons down to combine prisons together, to open up private because he had friends in the private industry. Well, imagine that the government fucking trying to make money. It's insane, so, right? It's such a or weird not the concept. government trying to make money, politicians trying to make money. It's such a crazy concept. That really happens. Why do people come from out of state? To come to Florida, like you just said, there was a guy in California who stabbed and killed somebody or stabbed somebody. He's coming to this no, place. Okay. Well, because he was a federal inmate. So why are they coming here in Florida? Because the same thing the, like with... Uh, the feds can put you anywhere they want in the country. If you're a federal inmate, you just go to the different federal prisons. Why do all the Italian mafia bosses come down to Florida? I think it's a Boca Raton. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because, um, you know, our federal prison, we had a lot of mafia guys. But when I worked at federal prison in 2004... We had 9-11 terrorists there. Uh, we had other terrorist guys there. We had a lot of mafia, Wait, they like didn't you said. All die? Huh? 9-11 terrorists didn't all die? Um, guys, other guys, other guys that were still part of the intel uh, part of it, yeah. No, we had the dead bodies. I knew it! It was a conspiracy. We, we had the dead bodies hanging out. No, we, just guys that were um, involved somehow, you know, the people they picked up. And, um, like, we'd have, we did have a lot of mafia guys. It was kind of funny you say well, that. Well, yeah. the reason I asked was, like, my dad, when he was a cop in New York... In the 70s and 80s, some guys that were corrupt got picked up. Mm-hmm. They all got shipped down to Florida. Yeah. And they all died in Florida prison, so I was just curious. No, I, I, honestly, I don't... Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, well, they died of old age, but I was wondering yeah. why they're all, all these, like, high... Like, the Whitey Bulger guy from Black Mass, he went to Florida. The big... Uh, everybody went to Florida. Well, at a certain level, some of them go to Colorado Soup Max. Like, some of the main, main guys, like... um. Like Hoover, who saw the, the the gang site was years ago. He went to the Colorado Suit Max. A lot of guys were the Colorado Suit Max. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure why some people come to Federal Coleman. A lot of people come to Federal Coleman. But you'll see some of these guys, they'll transfer all over the country, the whole entire um, incarceration. They'll, trans- they'll be transferring all different places. Mm. What? Coleman's huge, too. Coleman's very big. Coleman's is, is a ginormous compound. Now it is. It's funny. When I worked there years ago, there was nothing around there. I went to an Intel meeting like a few years back. And when I used to work at Coleman, I used to drive down the four way to the Turnpike to Claremont and cut around. Had to go. To, now they have like exits right there. And they really built up because a lot of people started buying houses in Leesburg too and built up Leesburg over there. So yeah, it used to be very remote at one time. Yeah. So you guys. So, okay. We talked about this a little bit briefly. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. The sorry. cop killer, uh, Lloyd. What's yeah, Marcus Lloyd. Marquise Lloyd. He killed. Uh, uh, he executed an o, an Orlando Police Department sergeant um, mm-hmm. while he was being apprehended, or right before he was apprehended. So, and then another deputy in that county, uh, in Orange County, crashed in an effort to aid in his apprehension. Murdered his yeah, 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 murdered his pregnant girlfriend. So this yeah. guy's a true piece of shit. Mm-hmm. This guy's also one of the dudes that um, when they found him. I think that was the last case of, uh, you know, uh, street get, justice. get a little bit of street justice. Uh, he they pulled him out and he lost his eye for the ass beating yeah. guy. And I heard that whatever bird was above. I don't know if this is true. Their camera tilted over when uh, during some stuff again that, you know, so it didn't capture anything. But he got tuned up, lost his eye. And when I went into the jail, uh a lot. Of, uh, I was talking to a guard, and they said, and, and I think you're going to rebut this, but he said that anytime Mark Heath Lloyd is in Orange, is in <laughs> the jail because of an appellate process or an appeals process, it's a nightmare because I heard a he's really big and he's a giant asshole. And so, your thoughts? So every time Lloyd comes in, uh, he goes to this, we have a this place called the Six Floors are really bad guys or admin confinement guys where they can come in and out of the jail, the, the cell one hour a day and that's it. And they're, they're escorted by our, mostly our special response team guys escort them. Lloyd knows who he can mess with and who he couldn't mess with. A senior officer he wasn't messed with. He is actually institutionalized kind of already. So once he's back in the institution from, he was a federal inmate years ago. So he came back in. He really didn't give you a hard time. He had his issues. But he didn't really, but yeah, it's, a, it's only a pain because when they moved him, we had to have, you know, uh, our special response team moving because high profile cases, they get violent and stuff. But uh, I work a lot of overtime up there and I never had an issue with the guy. I don't, you, met you know, him? Yeah, I met him. Um, I've seen him all day. Yeah, I served in shower before I just, as a correctional for so many years, I tried to think about what people do. Yeah. Do I know that he's garbage? Yeah. But 
if you looked at every single inmate in there, because we do have other cop kills, we had um we had a guy out there for so long that I didn't know he was the so- the sovereign that executed the two uh, officers in Kissimmee. He never knew who he was. I worked up there, never looked oh, up wow. his charges because we were holding him from Osceola County. And one day, very respectful, very uh, polite and respectful to the officers. Yes, no, it is. And one day, and one says, you know who that is? I said, no, nah, I don't really pay attention to, um, I wasn't really doing anything anymore. I'm doing canine now, so I don't really pay. And he told me who that was. Like, wow, because they're different from the street and inside the jail a lot of times. So yeah, did we have issues with Lloyd? Yeah, we had issues with him, but not to the level that people try to say they did uh, sometimes. But we, there was issues with him, but not not like it wasn't, I worked over. There, I worked up there all the time. A senior officer worked that floor, and he didn't give us a hard time, mm-hmm. except for one time he did because he he wanted to pull a lot of stuff to try and get an outside charge, not to go to D or C, and it didn't work. That was mm. it. But yeah, but certain inmates, we have other inmates a lot worse than Lloyd that people don't know we have in there. We had this one guy. Um, I don't know his name out there. He's still going to court and everything like that. But we, he came in California. Uh, he's in California. Right? A few days before he came in California, he killed his roommate and stuck him on their bunk in a California prison. We've been in California prison forever. They got him always in murder. This guy's been killing people for years. They brought him back here for a case. He's been out of jail for like eight, nine years now, waiting to go back to court. But again, very institutionalized, very respectable. Will he kill me to get through that door to go home? Of course. He's a bad dude. But you wouldn't know he was a bad dude because not like the movies. It's not like the movies where you walk through and like, hey, and they're, it's not like, you have more, you get bigger problems with fights and uses of force, inmates that buck, that buck on you, like resist you, just resist you, your verbal order from transits and child molesters. They do the murder. So, oh, okay, murders. so it's the dudes that have been essentially raised in institutions yeah. um, since they were teenagers. They know how to act. That's oh, It's yeah. almost like they act more normal behind yeah. bars than they do out in society. And they know who they can mess with, who they can't mess with. They know who new officers are. They know who's doing what. Uh, but I said, yeah, I... I <laughs> Tra- Transient and child molesters give you a hard time. They'll they'll crush you. Child molesters give you hard because because child molesters, a lot of them I've dealt with in my career. They think they did nothing wrong, mm-hmm. and they think so they like did nothing wrong. Quality. Yeah, they think they did nothing wrong. Uh, we had this guy years ago, like 2007, and he was a doctor. He's going to prison for molesting these kids and all that. But he always be like, "I'm a doctor. What are you?" I said, "I'm not going to prison for raping kids." You know, as like I said, I, I, you might be a doctor, but I'm going home later. You know. Are you still? Are you allowed to talk shit to people, or is that frowned upon now? If, if like, you, and I only ask because in law enforcement, we and Sam talk about this all the time. Ten years ago, you could talk all the shit you wanted. People talk back. You know, obviously we're cops. We're respectful to people. Yeah. But sometimes people just need to be called a fucking asshole, and cops can't do that nowadays. But are you guys allowed to do that, or is that? Yeah, supposed to, but it happens sometimes. You sure with inmates, you show respect. They mostly give you respect. But and yeah, that's but once in a while, you got you got you got you got to run your mouth. But a little bit. you guys have a different. You guys have a different thing going on because as cops, we only have to deal with somebody until they get to the jail. We're done with them. You have People. to live with them, and it's a respect thing. And when we're when someone's talking shit to us, you know, I know in twenty minutes, I, I if he's that bad, I know I bring him in and y'all take him, and I can type my report in peace. Yeah. Where y'all, it's almost like you can't let someone talk to you that way. You know, and and there's no rules against them yeah. saying, "Hey, you know, you." Beep, 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 but it it, de- it depends because um, like you know, they'll run the mouth to you, and you don't let it bother you. They're gonna shut up. But when I've seen them push buttons on, especially newer officers, they go crazy yelling and screaming. Like that guy just got to you, man. Don't let him get to you. At the end of the day, uh, I'm it's going home. Be different, I, I again, and I said I'm at a different level because I know these inmates are so long. They trust, they respect me. I built trust with these guys doing intel and gangs long. But I have guys yell at me who know who I am. They yell at me, and I was like, all right, dude. Like, unless you put your hands on me and spit on me, I mean, it is what it is. But the difference with your guys' job, my job is every day I know I'm walking to a place where 3,000 people have been in trouble for something. Not everyone's guilty. Not everyone made some people charged wrongly. But at the end of the day, I know, I know there's 3,000 there's three thousand inmates in there. Well, now numbers are lower. One time we had 6,000 inmates years ago. We had inmates everywhere. But with the new... Thanks, Biden. Yeah. And, <laughs> but I know I'm walking into a jail. Not saying what jail we're at. Now, walk into a jail... And um, I know it's all, they're all inmates. So I know I got to make sure who's going to get over me, what's going to happen. So I let those guys push my buttons. You know, the worst thing you could do as an officer, and I've had a good example. I'm working overtime in a lockdown area. Not to say I'm working with. It goes, hey, man, you ready to write some reports? These guys pissed me off yesterday. I said, no. I go, that was yesterday. Today's a new day. I go, see what happens. But the, again, when I started working it, all the inmates know me. So no one gives a hard time. They go, hey, Tattoo, what's going on? How you doing? You know? So it's like, no, whatever happened yesterday happened yesterday. Unless you're working a case or working at Intel or working gang. Yeah, and then yesterday has to come back to today because we have to do stuff. But if you are let these inmates bother you, make fun of you, call us names. Oh, yeah, I should have been an inmate out. 
oh, you the shipping house because you like us. Hey, listen, man, I've been a correctional for 21 years. I've seen a lot of naked dudes. Yeah, it's dude, just part of the well, job. You know what well, I mean? I mean I Hero Podcast is brought to you by Refracted Wolf Apparel. And I'm sitting here with the CEO of Refracted Wolf Apparel, Tyler. How you doing, Tyler? I'm doing good, Tyler. How about you? I'm doing fantastic, brother. So tell us a little bit about your company. Refracted Wolf Apparel is an apparel company for people on the front lines doing real shit. So first responders, veterans, military, frontline workers, or anybody who supports those types of occupations. That's badass, dude. So you're kind of like a darker line of apparel for the people on the front line. Yeah, I guess you could say that. We definitely ain't no grunt style. Hell yeah, screw those dudes. Fracted Wolf Apparel, use Antihero for 15% off. I was going to ask a question about, so my father, he came back from Vietnam. He did one year in Rikers Island. Did you ever face this problem? Because he's like, I did one year, and the reason I quit and went to the NYPD, and it was, you know, the NYPD was asking for Vietnam vets, but he started feeling like them because he was spending so much time no, in the jail. I can cut it off. A lot of people, some people can't, but yeah. it might be because he had PTSD in Vietnam. They remember yeah. they didn't discuss PTSD back then and stuff like that. So he, he, said, he was like, I, I felt like I was in no. the jail with these nope. guys surviving. Mm. He's no. like, I, and it was just psychotic in there, and it was just. Uh, no, Rikers Island, I don't bad know, too, right? Because I know I'm going home again. I said I don't work the floor every day. I work. In, I, mean, I do work overtime the floor once, twice a week. But I'm, I never well, had I'm that feeling. Like Twenty years ago, when nah, you I never had that feeling because I knew I was going home at the end of the day. I never had that level of oh, these guys getting to me. I'm gonna go home and and drink and start fights and stuff. I, but then if you were a military guy, you saw combat. Maybe had PTSD. It will set that off more. Where like loud noises, loud as hell in there. Your dad was in Vietnam, so it's probably like, whoa, it's loud and chaotic. No, and, I think you know? what he's saying is that like almost like you become, like you bathe in sin for so long to the point where you start sinning yourself. You, no, you, you know, can't. There, there's, it, like, it happens, I'm yeah. sure, but I, speaking for myself, I, I, I never, respect yeah. someone that can work in corrections for 24 years and says they like it and is not it. cynical. You got, I you're a very it, positive person. I get to hang out with my dog every day. I think I got the worst day in corrections. I know me and my dog are driving home together and we're going to be buds. And, uh, I don't, I said, I can, even when I, I worked the floor the other day, I worked overtime the other day, all day on the floor, work with guys. I knew guys who I taught their academy years ago. They're up in like their supervisors now. I don't let it get to me, man. It's just gotta be draining. Like I watched my wife. Um, we did a stint where oh. we, yeah, that's you. <laughs> um, where she was doing, uh, she had to do prisoner transport back when she was in law enforcement for a while. And I remember her coming home and telling me just how mentally exhausting it is balancing like, um, like I, it's mentally exhausting for me to have someone in my car for three hours to show them the respect they need and teeter the line of being a law enforcement officer and an author and someone in a power of, in a position of authority versus someone that deserves respect. They're a human being mm-hmm. and they like to push that. Until you, you know, and it's just. But they also knew that I was only there to take them to and from the courthouse. So yeah. it was constantly them testing me because they didn't know. Yeah, yeah like, kind of uh, like what you're saying. They'll do the like, test, yeah. yeah. I've walked in the areas and inmates test me and my dog and test me or something like that. And it's usually an inmate that knows me shuts it down right away. You know, oh. that's tattoo. Because you have good that relationships with some of the guys that. Dude, some of these gang members owe me so many favors. It's unreal. And not favors are dating <laughs> bad. It could, it could have been easily as just. Back in the day, getting a phone call to their mom and dad. We would never let them call a victim, never call. But you get a, like you say, hey, how do you guys get information? And like people, you give them cigarettes, give them food, give them this. Yeah, we get them food here and there from the cafe, from our our kitchen. Not, not illegally. Not, nothing coming in from the outside. But man, you get an inmate who's, who's baby mom has had another kid and you bring them to that phone and um, and let them use the phone. Five minutes to talk to, talk to who's like, But you're allowed that to do that. Every, where, as to, Intel is allowed to do that. To, as a regular correctional officer, you can't do that. Yeah, but you have the I authority do stuff that you to could, do that. Yeah, my major back in the day, the one who, uh, he's actually deputy chief, retired a few years ago. He'd be like, do what you do and figure out what's going on here. So, okay, I'm going to talk to some of the inmates. So they know, like, we give them a, we didn't do anything illegal. We didn't bring food in from the outside. Um, and we we just like, hey, man, but you just give them that respect to the, hey, man, uh, you know, hey, call your baby mom, call your mom. You're not allowed to call a victim. We're going to listen to the phone call on speaker. So we know nothing's bad going on. Mm-hmm. Or do and, uh, you give them, you give them calls off the records, or is it got to be recorded? Soon? No, we'll give them in the office off the record. Off yeah. the record off calls, the record. yeah. Huh? You but that's what I said. It's got to be. It's got to be a fan. I mean, it's be, again, it's unwritten law. This is years ago. We didn't tell. Yeah, us. Like, they yeah, don't do yeah. it anymore. But it's like uh, you put it on speakerphone and say, "Hey, real police works." No, I feel like that's that just being human, though. Yeah, and you show them a little human. Like, all right, one guy did that for years ago, and he's always every time I come in. Then they had that big. Uh, 
shooting at Diamond Club with the bike gangs and street gangs many years ago. All that whole stuff going on with the uh, the Rough Riders and the um, that's a real thing. Rough Riders? Yeah, real bike. Was, uh, well, what would happen was a lot of the street, yeah, a lot of the street, yeah, yeah, no, a lot, like yeah, sport bike clubs. What happened was um, years ago, a lot of these sport bike clubs started coming up, and they were wearing rockers, and they weren't getting out, they weren't commissioned the outlaws. So the outlaws say, okay, we took the Rough Riders from New York, come down here, a guy, yeah. um, a guy named, called him Wingnut, I don't know what his real name was, he was in charge of them all, and uh, the these guys do called uh, Most Wanted, then they turned into... Um, not Legion of Doom is a new group now. Oh, sounds like a wrestling thug tag riders. Team. They turned it. They, they <laughs> became thug riders from New Jersey. They wound up patching over. This other group is a big thug riders, huge sport bike club. And now, now they do street bikes to um, motor, you know, um, cruising bikes. So they had these guys come up to the Diamond Clubs. Hey, give us your patch, your rockers, or outlaws. So you know, and they said no. That there was like a whole bunch of shootouts because of that. It started with Diamond Club. They had a shootout on the 408. They had a shootout on a, not the one with the Warlocks, but this other fight shoot all over sport bike clubs wearing rockers. Well, one of the guys, these are street gang guys, getting recruited to these sport bike clubs. A guy that I owed, a, owed me a favor because I let him call his baby mama like probably five years before that. He, I said, hey, man, I need you to talk to a few of the guys from the street, you know, agencies off the record and give him some information. They did because he owed me a favor and calling his baby mama. That's They that, respect that? Absolutely. Because the shit bags that... Well, I'll say it. The shit bags that we run into, they have no code of honor. Now, the people that you deal with that are institutionalized most of their life, they have to learn a code of honor or they won't survive. Outside, the ones that cry when they have to go to jail, they don't recognize. Like when we're on the street, very few people, and there's very, it's becoming very few and far between that you find someone on the street, you hook up. On a misdemeanor, you let sly. Mm -hmm. You owe me one. Those days are gone. I'm not talking about save my life. Those days are gone, yeah. But I'm talking about like, you know, like, hey, yo, remember that one time? And they'll be like, no, no, I don't have anything for you. Like, okay, that's the last time. But Mm -hmm. they don't, again, it's it's a game. I don't expect him to take a bullet for me. But when I hook him up, you know, and but that that's that street code yeah, is gone. gone. I think it changed. You know what the problem we talk about? You guys bring them to us, and they're such a hard time. You guys are getting right at the heat of the moment, heat yeah. of arresting them, or maybe a shooting or drug acts. You let them. I had guys come in that I knew for years that are acting the fool, detox me after a week or two, and then like they apologize. The officer give them a hard time because detox. Because now they are detox. They're not on drugs. They don't have their guns. They might have shanks. They don't have their weapons. So when you guys get them. It's the heat of the moment. I that's believe. what I don't work the streets. That's I'm what not a lot really of, sure, but that's what I always thought. That's what law enforcement. Uh, the toughest part about law enforcement and with rookies and is that you get there and it's the heat of the moment and it's me taking you to jail and now we're together and we're doing this whole process together and it's the I'm the one who's technically ruining yeah. ruining your life. Yeah. So that's what sucks. And then when we pass them off to COs, they don't know that CO, so they act yeah. different. Yeah, hey, I would run through that booking floor, and you know those guys shout out to me a lot of times. But I say, hey, you're with these guys, you're not ours yet. I'll talk yeah. to you. Go inside. What's a what's something that a a new guy in working at your jail? Let's say let's just use jails, county jails. What's a, how long are you going to stay on the floor, and what are ways to get out of you know the grunt? Especially teams get special teams. Yeah, I tell yeah. I I mean control. I'm sorry. I know what you mean. I tell people all the time, the academy, you get off the floor, you know, get the specialty spot, get something you like. But right now we're so short staffed and we're, our Intel gang unit is three people down for like two years now. They won't, they won't fill them. So the other people on the Intel gang unit who don't do canine are overworked with some, because we have so many drug cases going on. Others that we, we deal with this paper drug stuff. That's really hard to dogs only find it's chemicals, whole different subject later on if you want, but they can't fill it. So we have transportation spots. Like, we got these good spots in transportation where you drive, like, kind of what you were doing the court. You bring people back and forth to court. It's a great spot to get. You have that bunch of years to get it. We have other admin spots, but they won't they won't post anything because they can't get the bodies off the floor. So when you had kids coming in for a few years, like, hey, I know in five years I can get to Intel, or, or uh, but I can get over to the, the rec team to work the recreation yard, or I could work the training division. It's not really happening now. It's not getting them incentive to go anywhere. Not because the jail is being mean. It's because there's no bodies to let you move around. Unless you're going to become, you put in for corporal, that's about it. So they won't fill these spots. So normally it would have been like five years, you can put in for intel. In you know, a few years, like two, I think it's two or three years, put in for a corporal, get off the floor, and get an admin spot. It's more than that. Uh, yeah. it, now because it's, they're not posting stuff because of, uh, they're not posting stuff because that we're so short. But, and, what, and that's when a lot of people used to come to our jail at one time. You work at other agency in jails, you, um, you can go to that jail to go work that day and hey, you're going out to the hospital with an inmate. 
or hey, uh, you go, you got to go work here, this specialty spot here, but you're not get specialty team. Where our place always had, we have all these transportation offices that drive people around all day long. It's a great spot. It's a great correctional gig, driving back for the courthouse, driving back to other prisons. That's corrections. Stuff. It's corrections. Yeah, it's a great gig. Then we then we have a rec teams. We have uh, we have a team of. Um, it's called FSS. They do inspections and stuff like that. We have so many spots you can go to as an admin correction officer, still get your high risk retirement, and still not deal with inmates that much. Yeah. So, but it's hard to get to those spots now. Back in the day, three to five years, you can get these good, some cool spots. Yeah. What's the most dangerous CO spot? I think they all kind of are. Depends where you are. Um, I think transportation is because they're riskier on the road a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I have a my canine vehicle looks like a, sh- a, a deputy's vehicle. We have a six point stars as correction instead of saying thing. So people wait, flag wait, say that again. My canine your, vehicle. Your looks New York like, is coming out. Oh, <laughs> my uh, my canine vehicle looks like looks like your vehicle, but with yeah. a six point star. Okay. It has corrections. So I get people flag me down. I get people think I'm a deputy and I have stopped for car. Well, I stopped for car accidents before and just a car accident. I stopped for a medical thing. But I, I remember this guy, uh, I got flagged down for this big accident on orange Avenue from the dunk domes right there. This guy hit all these cars. Like he's drunk. I called nine one. He said, listen, I mean, sure right away. I'm a correction. I have no rest authority. This guy's walking away from the scene. I go, there's an accident here. Does it present someone? I have no, and they're like, Oh, get that guy is drunk. I said, I'm a correction. I have no, I have no authority to detain anyone on the street. I made sure they knew that I wasn't trying to be, but I, but it was an accident. Someone was hurt, so I stopped. Yeah, you yeah. know. But other times, like when one guy flagged, hey, that guy just robbed me. I said, call nine one. Yeah, they'll be yeah. there in three. Hours. Well, because people just see. <laughs> <laughs> call nine one. Yeah, I mean, people see a uniform though; they don't care. I mean, look, a, a lot of times with us, I mean, we'll be driving, like you know, like we'll drive. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, let's say you go into the gym before work. You know, you're not going to be. And people will flag you down. They, they'll flag people. What was it? I heard it again. It yeah, sounds like. I heard it too. Yeah. Oh, I did hear that. Is your, is your it went off once before you guys didn't hear. No? Are you guys secretly recording me for my job in internal affairs? No. <laughs> hey, I got to go. There is. I heard it. I just I heard, heard it. it I don't have one. Sam, you fucking IA snitch. <laughs> I was going to I talk. was wondering why he was wanting to. <laughs> my, name, my name is George Smith. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, I pro- I promise. I, it, it sounded like Sam. Promise. Get him to say this. <laughs> that is fucking weird. Talk about t- <laughs> talk about TRT. I whoa. Yeah. I heard it, but I was talking, and then I, yeah, I didn't. Either was some crazy. I don't know how this stuff works. I'm old. It sounds like a radio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I heard it too. But I, was, I thought it was something you guys are doing. Cause I'm some old mm. man. I don't know how any of this stuff works. It's not. No one has anything on their phone, right? No. no. Yeah. It was like rah, 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 rah. No, that was like a that was a walkie talkie when you hit it when you're done letting Wait, it. edit. Aren't you supposed to say edit so you can edit this stuff? No, this is good content. Okay, oh. so I have this irrational fear that someone lives in our attic and comes down like <laughs> in the night, which in Florida would be impossible to do because they had a heat stroke. But I know those heads crawl around those attics sometimes. <laughs> Edit in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, Kendra. <laughs> <You're not shy. laughs> All right. Anyways, um, I wanted to ask because county or count. Well, this is across the state. County, county jails. They're only supposed to be there a year, but there's a lot of guys that stay over the year. If they they could be sentenced to less than one year, they say count. But this guy's like, like there's one guy I talked about before for King California. He's been there. Eight nine years now. There's some people. So we get. Um, so what? What's worse is a federal jail or a county jail? A federal is federal is federal is very violent. People don't realize when I worked there, I seen a lot of violent. But at the end of the day, it's better. Uh, people don't like being in the county jail. They want to go. They want to go to prison because prison they have more freedom to go to the rec yards, walk around, order more food. Uh, not freedom like to get away and like escape mm-hmm. or anything, but they we they're very limited movement in the jail. You know, you go to rec once. You're lucky for an hour a but day. Jail jail is where you have the two man cell. 
No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Prisons. We do. No, we have two man cells. No, all, everything's different. It depends where you go. I watch um, a lot of movies. Okay. Yeah, the movie. <laughs> so I haven't been to any. Okay, I'll tell you right now. I was very disappointed. When I got hired on from corrections years ago. I walk into the prison like, hey, where's all the bars? I thought it'd be like, like bars and people yelling at me yeah. and stuff. No, it's not like that at all. It's sliding doors and open. Florida has a lot of open bay area, open bay like uh, block, open bay areas. That's yeah. a great show. We, well, we, we do too. That with a um, what's that jail show we always watch? Oh my god, that is an I don't amazing. think that, I don't think that show's real. No, think I don't that. how could you put someone in there for that kind of for that in the, the, what the if liability? Stabbed to death or, <laughs> or raped. Season yeah. canceled. Yeah. <laughs> well that's why um how I think do you they say? pick the, if it's real inmates they pick hand pick those inmates to and they, hey man, this is what you got going what on. What was the guy that uh oh sorry. That's it was the guy that uh he was he would uh the child molesters, something Hansen. Chris Hansen. Yeah, you know why that show got canceled? Yeah, because someone got killed on it. Yeah, you know who the killed was? No. The killer killed victim? Yeah. No. Okay. Was he, a child he was a state attorney. <laughs> yeah. So he caught the state attorney, and the state attorney ran out and killed himself. And it was all on their thing, but they, they never aired that show. I want to see that show now. Yeah. And then they episode I want to see. It's like yeah. the one episode everyone wants to see. <laughs> Do they... Um, are inmates dress different for their crimes? Like, hey, I'm a life inmate. No, they they dress different for the custody levels of their behavior sometimes. Okay. Like, um, like um, you have a low custody guy. He can be a worker, so he'll be wearing orange a lot of times. Or he'll work the kitchen and wears yellow. Just so you know, hey, that's a worker. So it's not like, hey, I'm here for life. I wear this color. No, they have, uh, they have different colors on their IDs. Mm-hmm. And, but... It's not always because of that crime. You can have a guy, you can have a guy, again, let's go back to a homeless transient guy. And without saying homeless, no, transients. With transient guy comes in. Bums. He could, bums. He could fight, spit on you, try and stab his, he can, he can come in for a trespass charge you guys gave him, fought the officers on the way in, and next you know you're max one going to special management because you gave so much a hard time. You can have a murderer. The murders will never be under, there's different levels, there's four different levels we have left. Uh, low is yellow, then the, Right above that's green. Those guys will all be different workers in different areas. Above that's orange, and um, they can be workers in certain spots in their, in their building. They can't go to different buildings. But then you have blue and red. Blue is the could be murderers, rapists, child molesters that don't cause any problems. The red are the ones that come in like the Lloyds. He's coming. He came in as a red. Right. He's gonna be a red special man in close custody. Red are the guys that either the capital life inmates coming back for a crime to come to prison to go back to court, or they give you such a hard time. Just because he murdered a police officer doesn't mean he's going to be a red. We always fought that sometimes in classification. He should be. It doesn't matter. If they're a murderer, they can still be a blue. But they won't get any jobs anywhere. They have to stay in their cells all the time. But they'll be in general population. Mm. A reds, reds are either I had like in a admin confinements. Of, I had a sex offender the other day that got red. He Probably because it's probably his behavior. What? He probably past behavior will dictate what color. He, he can come in on a charge, but his last past behavior will make him red right away. Again, from past behavior. Do classification se- do, goes wrong. Do you... So. Uh, Child molesters and sexual predators, do they get red for their protection or no? No. They don't really get PC. They, it's not like they used to get PC. No, they're, they're in general population. Whoa. They can say, they're oh. They're served up to street um, justice. The street judge changed a lot. And that came from cameras too. So the days of these guys, now, unless it's really heinous, they re, if it's really heinous, trial, uh, charged, yeah, they will go to PC for the while and get cleared. They go to general population. <laughs> um, and then they go to general population. Yeah, we had a, <laughs> we had a good case. Of, oh, no, that case is still going. I can't talk about that one. I'll talk about it off the record later. That's a good story. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's from behavior. So they'll go to PC, have custody for a little while. Then you get kicked out of have custody and go to um, go to general population. And sometimes business will be handled. Sometimes it won't. Depends on the level of the child unless in charge, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's not like it used to be where they used to be handled. They used to be handled I thought they were protected. Only, only when they first come in? They have to be uh, looked at by the uh, classification and the major sign off. Okay, these guys need PC, and some of them don't want PC. They want to go general population. Well, so you if know? you if you're if you get busted for something that all the inmates don't like, you better bond out of jail fast. Yeah, right? like if you're a law enforcement, <laughs> you you're a law enforcement officer, a prior law enforcement officer, you go to PC. You have no choice. You're going to pay for your whole stay. Yeah, you come in for a DUI. Yeah, you come let's in. talk about that. Let's okay. talk about that. Um, the yeah, in, that'll be good. The intake of law enforcement officers. I say this all the time. I feel for, you know, I, I feel for cops. Oh, oh, what, is what is it? What is it? 
What is it? We used to have these buttons to warn each other. When we started the podcast, we had these like buttons. So like, when somebody was getting out of line, you hit it, and they had to stop talking. Oh. That's what it was. You're hitting it with your damn toes. Okay. Anyways. Okay, sorry. Cops, you know, they, they live... The environment that they surround themselves with, it's really easy for them to succumb to it, I think, sometimes with a drinking problem oh, yeah. or anything like that. You know, maybe they take their anger at home and uh, grab their wife, you know, or or grab her husband. It, and I feel like, you know, those things right there, it's a it's a career killer. It's a li- it, it could be a life, you know, as far as like, you know, because when you're a cop and you get arrested, now no one, you, it's hard to get a job anywhere because people are like, whoa, you got fired as a cop. That means you're a morally bad person. Yeah. No, it means that you... And in, in your job, too, you're held to such a high standard. Yeah. All right. You can't wait? No. Don't, don't hit that camera. I know. Uh, you can hit it. I can. <laughs> um, but as far as intake for a law enforcement officer, um, give me the jail side. I know that law enforcement, the agencies are going to have their admin involved. I know the state's going to be involved in that. But as far as correction goes, how does that... Well, if it's someone that we they know they're going to put charge on, maybe, maybe it's an assault charge or something, they're waiting for his DA to pick up and they're ready to come back to jail, they'll be ready for him to do a fast track. they fast track him through booking, put him in PC. And the same thing, if someone comes in and say, say it's just a, say an officer got a DUI and they get arrested, they're just going to fast track him through the booking. They're not going to stay on the booking floor. They're going to fast track through, do their stuff, they're going to go to a PC cell away from everybody. They're not going to be on the booking floor. Gonna, they call it fast tracking. Uh, that's good for now. Like, yeah. You know, they, they, but then they go to PC. If they stay in the jail, they're going to PC. Okay, so you, you know? got to get out of the jail. You got to yeah. find out. We, yeah, we had a guy, um, he was a CO years ago, went to prison, I mean, years ago, went to prison, came back. He came back so many times that eventually, no one even realized he even worked there, years, knew people. And I saw one day he was in PC going back to DOC. I'm like, hey, you know that? Not PC, he was in general population. Hey, you know that guy's in general population? Like, man, no one even knows who he is anymore. Who was he? It was, it was an officer years ago. Uh, and he got child molesting charges and he went to prison. So he always comes back. But you swear he's an inmate now. You wouldn't even know. It was back in the day, he used to put him in PC. I mean, this is like What's going back in years before. General I population intel. in a county jail, how at risk is a law enforcement officer? How at, in all reality? Because the way as a cop I see it, I feel like as soon as they throw me in there, um, at my first thought is I'm in a lot of danger and you see the movies and stuff, but in all reality, is it, is it just enough to keep them out of it? Like, Hey, we're not going to risk it. Or are they really, do you think they're, it, when it comes to the County jail and stuff you see in the movies, stuff, see, I'm sure you hate watching cop movies sometimes. You yeah. Know, you're unrealistic. counting bullets and how you, who's, who's cocking revolvers and you know, who's yeah. every time you're going to put a shotgun <laughs> shell on something. So the thing with corrections, I watch movies and I was like, in most movies, every correction officer either they're fat or, um, they're or they're uh, they're fat, stupid, or dirty. I'm not gonna say a lot of them are fat, but uh, but you know every correction officer in the movie is usually dirty. I think they're gonna fall. Oh, it's not gonna fall. That they're dirty or they cause a problem. So same thing. So it's not like the movies all the time. I'm trying to think if we had any. I think we had probably law enforcement guys that were law enforcement years ago that was in general population because no one really knew from other states. But usually, if it's well known and they can't, hide, it goes to PC and no one's gonna mess with them. No one's threatening. No one in PCs threatening them. No one's messing with them and stuff like that. And but they they're paying the ass out sometimes. We had one guy. He Cops was in are PC. paying the ass. When they he go was there. a cop a long time ago. I forget he was in trouble for, from bad shit. He's in prison now. But he'd be the one taking notes on every officer walking over oh, there. What a would, buddy one of those guys. Yeah, I'm more or less talking about the cops that a DUI. Yeah. A guy has a DUI, DUI or a domestic, domestic case. Something that could be easily happen to any one of us. Yeah. Um, not like guy moving like 10 kilos with a squad car. So just regular everyday yes. crimes. Yeah, they're going to PC and they usually bond out pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Because it mean, happens with correction officers. They get in trouble for some stuff. They come to jail. We got to put them in PC so they get bonded out. You know, and I'm talking about I'm talking about DUI. Like someone get a DUI or a domestic Yeah, it's or, mainly like or a bench warrant for not paying child. I mean, something stupid, yeah. you know, something that anyone could do that any one of us could do any day or maybe got away with. Yeah. Yeah, that or yeah, you know, like you said, there's a lot of there's a lot of corrections and law enforcement officers that'll pass judgment on one of their own when they get busted because me and Sam talk about it all the time when you're when when you lose your shield because of your action or something happens to you, ever ninety eight percent of your work friends are gonna they're not even gonna they're gonna all they're gonna cut do cut you off yeah they're gonna cut you off because yeah. they're not really your friends 
But B, you know, they they I think sometimes they don't want to think about that they do it all the time too. Yeah. Um, you I, know I got, what I'm saying? I got fired from the feds, not even for anything criminally. And I don't talk to any of those people anymore. I worked for feds for two years and I got fired from Coleman. And um, like you said, no one, right? A few people reached out to me. So there's all the news you can actually Google it up. There's an, there was an inmate that gunned down, uh, gunned down, masturbating in the jail. He gunned down. Gunned Remember, I told you gun, about that. Gunned down a female. I told you. <laughs> I told him because I, I, I tried for this certain county. Yeah. And when I took the you test. You said running the gun. Running the gun. Gun down, run, yeah. yeah, gun down, running the gun is a Thank gun. Thank you. It's a gun. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I fucking told you. Yeah. So, so, um, so this, this. By the what? way, you guys didn't hire me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this what would you do if <laughs> yeah. Yeah, someone. You get a fight him? <laughs> <laughs> settle the scores? So. We talk about gunning down. So this guy guns down a female officer who happened to have a boyfriend that works there as an officer. And that's the only worst thing to do. I thought being the, you know, I was like, if, if you're... You a, jerk off in front of my girlfriend? Yeah, like, it ha- <laughs> I know, I can tell you this DOC story about that too. All these guys got fired because he jerked off in front of my I'll tell you that in a second. But she jerked, so they take the inmate, bring him to special housing, put him in a cell with a guy. And you could actually Google this. It's all, there's a big case. They put him in a cell mm-hmm. with an inmate. They nickname was Animal. This guy raped and beat him to death all night long, this guy, and killed him. The security guard or the correctional? No, the the inmate. They made a gun down. They think I killed. They got raped and killed. From they put him. In, okay, our, so our special housing. Oh, was hold on. This story. Clarify this. Is going so fast. Oh, I'm sorry. Guy jerks off in front of female corrections officer. At a female. He male gun turned, He runs the gun. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, at her. At her. Okay. Okay, I get it. When I say I don't get something, and then eight people start screaming at me. All right. So the jerks Friday. off at her. Friday. Sorry, at her. Friday. Her boyfriend, another officer, another corrections officer, then sticks him in with Animal, uh, the lieutenant, and then put him in with a guy named Animal, and he rapes him, and beats the other. They made the gun down, was raped and beat up all night long for this other inmate and killed him. Wow, just and they, well, they, well, they well, that is a pretty serious. Thing. Well, they get charged and they actually go to they go to prison for jerking um, off. No, no, the, no. The pe- the officers that put him in that cell got charged, oh. and the, the lieutenant, the lieutenant that got me, James, got me fired. He got demoted and switched to some like. Federal jail, like on the other side of the country, small yeah. place. So yeah, so can yeah. they do that? the The federal jail system just send you where they want. Yeah, they, you're if, at needs of the if you federal promo- government, if, right? When you promoted, when you were promoted in the federal, say I want to be a lieutenant, you're not going to be a lieutenant in the prison you worked at. You're going somewhere else in the country. Yeah. So yeah, you're bouncing around the country. And stuff, wow. but they can move you if they want to move you. But it's, you said it's, it's good money. It's anywhere. Oh, it's federal. It's great money. But when I was there, I mean, I was. This is 20 years ago. I worked feds. L. A. Holy cow! I made so much money. Even with federal, with California tax, I made so much money in Los Angeles working in federal corrections. Oh, and limited, again, unlimited overtime. Um, I like that. Big, I like the penitentiary. I like working in the county jail. I love it, but I always like the penitentiary, state prison atmosphere differently. Different, different kind of inmate. But yeah, that whole. Uh, I know another guy in DOC too. Guy, one guy passed away in a, in a car accident. I love the guy. It's one of the captains now. He passed away, but years ago, he's dating some girl. And um, he and they make guns are down, so they bring him to an area. They all beat him up really bad. It's a county county. They all get fired. What year was this? This is oh, we're going back two thousand and five, I think six. Different they, times. Yeah, they um they beat this guy really bad. They walked in front of these cameras. They all get fired. Well, they fight it. They all get their jobs back. <laughs> <laughs> that was a no. <laughs>